If you think I picked some crazy stuff, we are about to see some things that make me look like I am a meta slave. Looks standard at the beginning. We have two speed leads. We also have a Suiki, which I really do appreciate. And then we see some single target speed based damage dealers. So I wonder if this is going to be, they have no heals on the opponent's side. So as long as they can do enough damage, then it should be fine. Unfortunately, they did not have a defense break before the Dark Hellhound got his damage done. Otherwise, they would have taken that monkey out. But I think they shouldn't really have a hard time taking that monkey out now, especially with Vanessa Skell 1 into a defense break. And he gets the Tessarion. Now it strips into a defense break since the, uh, since the last balance patch. We should get another balance patch fairly soon. Unfortunately, Stella is down, but these things happen. And do they get the attack age decrease and the increased cooldown? And they get the stun, which means he's on despair, which I was not expecting. Okay. And the Oblivion, actually, that Dark Hellhound has a passive. So Oblivion does make a difference. It makes more of a difference on the Dark Hellhound than it does on Vanessa. They still, the opponent still concedes. I feel kind of guilty showing this because the player on the right hand side is one of my guildmates, but the player on the left hand side is using a single target LD snipe comp and does not get a leo so i guess uh my guildmate doesn't have a leo he also picked two fire i wouldn't recommend picking two fire at the very beginning of the match you may actually see him talking in chat too which is kind of kind of amusing or at least i think it's amusing and then speed buff so this uh dark hellhound is going to do quite a decent amount of damage thirty thousand damage with no defense break not too shabby the Leo would have mitigated a lot of that damage, though, because all these things are uh, damage based on speed. Also, you never really know if the uh, Dark Kung Fu Girl is actually going to ignore defense or not. Sometimes she's just very disappointing. Speaking of disappointing, uh, well, kind of thought that was going to do some more damage. But that's what happens when you don't actually crit. Uh, but yeah, Leo, Leo would have been very nasty. He must just not have a Leo, because Leo would have been very nasty against this comp. Because these things all do damage based on their speed. So, yeah, I think, well, I mean, they could still come back from this. They could still come back. I kind of feel like it's GG because they're at such a disadvantage. It's it's very one-sided right now, but even with that, uh, even with that shield and immunity, Elsharin can just strip it off. Elsharin is another one that's really underrated unit. People don't give him enough credit. Elsharion, Tessarion. This is a thing of beauty. Please, God, let me see this Yeti win. Please, don't ban the Yeti first off. And then let's see the, the Yeti actually win. So, Varad of all the units gets banned. We think of Shungpung as such a nasty unit, but Varad is actually a pretty pretty solid unit. I've uh, banned Varad myself as well. So, gets one stun with the Yeti. Yeti's going to counterattack. He's kind of similar to the... Uh, to the Wind Monkey and to also Artemiel. He's got a 50% chance to counterattack when allies are attacked. So let's see. And he's got Despair Runes, of course. That's how I have mine built as well. I have, I actually have this unit built uh, also. We've done videos with him before. So he is on Despair Revenge. And they just can see that like, I don't want to finish this match. <laughs> Get encountered by a Yeti. What am I watching? What am I watching? What, are the, what gets banned? Okay, Carlos gets banned. Very OP unit. Daphnis gets banned. That's not the thing that I thought. Well, based on the element advantage. Yeah, that makes sense. He's going to be fast. He's going to have element advantage. So this should be... I don't, I, I don't know what to expect, really. I do not know. All right, gets, gets the defense break. Panda Supremacy. It's a lot of debuffs. Tessera's not going to do too much. You just cleanse that off. Okay. This is a very, <laughs> this is a very interesting comp I was not expecting to see today. And then all of those, wow, all of those, all of those debuffs. Although the panda is still going to come in and he's going to do some very nice cleanses. Which is, as I mentioned, very nice. I don't know any other words, guys. All I know is very nice. <laughs> okay. I... This is this is this is gonna be crazy to see if they could pull this off. If they could pull off a win with Fire Panda and Wind Drunken Master. That Ethan is almost down. No defense break. No defense break. I think the Fire Panda is a little bit underrated. Uh underappreciated. There we go. And that is down. And Panda Supremacy. He's, he, so Tessarion does damage based on speed, so a speed break on him is actually going to make him do less damage. This is, this is wild. This is really wild. Skill 2? No, skill 3. Okay. 
This is ridiculous. Vanessa's not actually down, so... Vanessa's down now. Okay, finally Vanessa's down. This is ridiculous, man. They have to take that Shizuka down. They didn't have the cleanse. Okay. As soon as Shizuka's down... I, I, I honestly I don't even know what to think about this. <laughs> okay, Ethna skill 2. And then... Gets the cleanse. Okay. Thankfully, she can't use uh, Shizuka can't use skill 2 on herself anymore. So as long as they can take that Shizuka down and actually get the defense breaks, then they should be fine. Or maybe they're not fine. I don't know. Ragdoll can handle this. He's got no defense break, but... But as soon as they get that uh, skill 3 on the Ragdoll, then... They should be in a good spot. Ooh, now he's gonna... Oh, never mind. I was gonna say Torrent, but... I appreciate that one of the players we're taking a look at is named Buttchug. Uh, basically named Buttchug. Okay, so we got double LD5s on left-hand side. And of course, the best counter to double LD5s is bringing a water mummy in. Because what, what else are you going to bring? Bring a water mummy. This is clearly the answer. Okay, so let's see. They do have a pretty nasty combination, though. Because uh, Nora's going to strip and put dots on. Then Shizuka is going to copy all of those dots around. And then Water Mummy is going to come in. He's going to CC. He's going to put extra dots. He's going to do, uh, well, the heal blocks. Is I actually forgot about that part. And now Shizuka comes in. Does her crazy stuff. All things in nature. And then next time Nora gets a turn. Is going to just decrease all the HP of everything. And this is a pretty, <laughs> this is a pretty nasty spot that they're in right now. Um, if there was a Veramos or a Juno on the battlefield, this would be a very different match. Don't get me wrong. Uh, well, there's also some other units that would have been strong here as well. Things that uh, decrease, or things that cleanse the debuffs on themselves. But yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be GG. I, I can't see, I can't see them coming back from this really. Although. No, I can't see them coming back from this. They got enough CC to take care of the Ragdoll, I feel. Unless he resists everything and gets a whole bunch of Torrents. Defense break. Hold on. Let's see. Is he going to be able to Torrent on the Torrent and Crit on the Water Mummy? Well, he doesn't even have Torrent. Okay. I feel like that's GG. Yeah, this is such a wacky... Water Mummy, guys! When in doubt, just Water Mummy it out. I, I, I'm I, pretty sure this is game. Fairly standard opener. Okay. And then we see and then we see this. We see, we see this hot mess coming into RTA. I'm so curious. I'm so curious to see how this plays out. She's got a revive. She also has uh, an AoE. She also has that glancing. She also has some little heals. So let's... Let's... <laughs> Let's see, I suppose. Yeah, that amazing ice drop. I, I, I don't know that she's really going to do much here. Technically, they won with the water undying. I really appreciate this guy on the left-hand side because he uses a lot of odd picks, but he uses them in a very serious manner. This isn't just like gimmicks for the lulls. This is... He is seriously picking these units and he knows how to use them. So he uses things like Shizuka, Platy, Talasha, which are revivers. Also, the Talasha, if you guys are not familiar with what she does, she will take 50% HP from one of the uh, one of the allies and grants them a turn instantly, which is really nice with the Water Demon. Like, he actually knows what he's doing, as you can see right here. He also does the same thing with Leo, with Ramagas. It's a very interesting comp that a lot of people are not expecting to see. And honestly, like... Talasha is not something that I'm going to be using myself all the time. I'm like, I really don't want to use Talasha. <laughs> I would rather use some more ridiculous things. But the way he does it, it actually works for him. Um, what else? Oh, and Platy. I mean, Platy I will actually use in a very serious manner because Platy is definitely one of the best units in the game. And uh, she's obviously a very meta unit. Platy does the revive with uh, skill 2. And then she also... Let's see if we can find some more of this guy's matches, because this is very, very cool. And here's some more crazy Talasha nonsense. So we're going to have, they ban out the Oberon. They still do have the combo with the Leo. So Leo is going to be ignoring defense, and he's going to go for, I'm sure, the Dark Hell Lady first. Going to increase the attack age. And then Dark Hell Lady. Is this the Reviver? 77,000 damage. <laughs> That's quite a decent amount of damage. Jeez. 
I mean, their multipliers are very high with that uh, skill. That's why it's conditional, is because they can do crazy damage. They don't need an attack buff or anything. However, they they do need to actually be in torrent range or ignore defense torrent range. So I think this is just a matter of time at this point. Because, yeah. So we've got to first pick Vanessa and then also Carlos at the second round. Usually you see Carlos pick towards the end of the draft. However, if you've got a Talasha and Daphnis, Carlos is probably getting picked a little bit sooner. So the uh, Wind Demon gets banned out because they had two things or actually three things that were going to revive. So Wind Demon was kind of a must ban in that situation. Just food for thought. If you have Wind Demons of your own, you're like, oh, hold on. Wind Demon is actually pretty nice against certain things in the meta. So Daphnis is down. Actually, is Daphnis down? Daphnis is down. I was curious if they had damage mitigation from that. And now Juno is down, which means Carlos gets a turn. Let's see. Oh, Carlos really didn't have... Uh, enough setup to do much of anything and also water units as well so let's see the bulwark is going to be able to do some decent damage all things in nature stacks him completely and Daphnis is back but Daphnis can't really do too much here he doesn't have his third skill and now he's dead again although him being dead again just uh procs Carlos so Molong is down the Bulwer can still do some work. That can still kill things. And now that Shizuka's down... Although Shizuka can come back from the dead. So, they do have that. The glance on the Bulwer doesn't really do too much. But I suppose if you don't want... Because he's not built for damage aside from his... Uh, if he's stacked. So, he's he's dead anyway. So that is... GG. First pick Guillaume. He didn't even see what the opponents were going to pick. He's like, I'm just going to first pick Guillaume. I don't even care. Or maybe he's fought this person before and he knew what they were going to pick. But he's got the Guillaume and the Molly together. He also has the Wang out. It's always good to go into RTA with your Wang out. That's what I like. That's what I like to say. Okay. Gets only one stun on the Guillaume. Guillaume should have revenge on him too. So that's, that's what I like to put on revenge. I've seen a lot of other people that put revenge on Guillaume as well. So let's see. And gets the revenge. Okay, that was a decent amount against the uh, Asima. He does have a passive that increases the damage he does, though. So keep that in mind. And he should be built fairly tanky. This might just be GG, unless... Yeah, I feel like this is going to be just GG now. He had, he had one combo, and they disrupted it. And he's got invincibility again. I don't know what, uh, what he's going to do now. I mean, the monkey can go down, but he still has Guillaume. Guillaume's going to do his uh, invincibility. And even without that, what is Samoth going to do? He's, st he's still he's not going to concede yet. Yeah, this is... G1, of course, one of the most common meta first picks is Lisa Jameer into a Tashar Samoth. And a Sillin at the very end. Bans out the Shar, bans out the LD5. No surprise that the LD5 is banned. They don't have to worry too much about this Dark Robo. They do get the stun on... They get the stun on both of those units. They don't have to worry too much about Dots with the Dark Robo because they have two units that are going to cleanse everything off. Jameer has a cleanse on skill 3. And then also Lisa has this right here, this cleanse. Gets the glancing on Vertiheal, but Vertiheal gets a counter. So... Suppressive fire? Oppressive? Wait, is it suppressive fire or o oppressive fire? Or depressive fire? Okay. Nice stuns. Nice stuns. So Vert heals down as soon as he gets a turn. Jameer's also down. He's getting a lot of stuns with that Asylan. It's a wacky last pick, but, you know, if it works, it works. Comes back from the dead. Does he kill everything? Eh, he kills some stuff. And he's... Okay. Wow. Oh, that was so close, though. That was so close. That was so close. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> Welcome to Summoner's War. Just all ridiculous all the time.